Hey everybody, this is Rob the Metal Guy. And you've watched the Master Sing. And you are watching RR Rocks Presents San Ramon Rocks. San Ramon Rocks, or the, uh, what's the other title we have? Well, it's RR Rocks Presents San Ramon Rocks. Okay. The R &R R unofficial R rock and roll music, movies, entertainment show of San Ramon because San Ramon probably wouldn't give us an official approval to do this. So we are the unofficial show on YouTube representing San Ramon and everything else. Yes, we are. We don't need the mayor's approval. Okay. I don't even think the mayor right now, there's an election. So maybe the new mayor might like us if this show does well, but who cares? Does the mayor live on your street? That's like one of the old mayors. Got it. Isn't that sad? One of the old mayors lives on my street. So that's... that's it's something, but nothing, something. nothing to really write home about. Right. Well, for those who do not know, let's, you know, Raj, we haven't done a video on YouTube in a long time. First ever video we did was about illegal downloading mm -hmm. long ago. Long ago. How many years was that? Oh, God, that was at least half a decade. <laughs> We're not that old, but it, it well, was half a decade years. five years. So. I still feel when you say oh. half a decade, it's <laughs> right. pretty okay. well, well, yes. I don't want to think that too much. When I put it that way. It was like three years. Right. Okay, now it was crap. It was, but anyway, it's been a while. But we're back. Oh, we're getting we back got, to our roots now, you could say. We are. We're going back to just having fun, talking about topics that we enjoy. Mm -hmm. We've been involved in so many different projects and we still have some great projects. Art Our Rocks being one of the main ones right now. We actually are working on a documentary. Raj, why don't you tell everybody about that because you're editing currently this documentary that we're I working am. on. We have, we did have a, uh, a mishap, which uh, unfortunately has forced us to push the release date of the documentary back, but the documentary will definitely be coming out before the end of the year. See, there you go. We've got to put the footage together. and got to make sure everything is as clean and crisp as possible. So there's an update on the documentary. That's one of the things we've been working on. It explains why we have not made a video in a while. And I, even I haven't made a video in a while. And I would like to, you know, do an album reviews. Because look at some of the great albums I have here, Raj. Look at this. My oh, Dio... Holy Diver on vinyl, you know, there's just so many. And Raj and I are thinking with this San Ramon Rocks YouTube show that maybe we can get back as Raj to our roots of talking about topics, rock, metal music, mm -hmm. great movies, and once in a while, giving our thoughts on the WWE. All things entertainment. Now, today's segment is called Thoughts from the Master Sing. I have come up with this Fantastic segment. Name. Yes, it's, it's a good name. I do yes. agree. In the segment, the whole idea is we're going to get you, Raj, the master Singh, to give his thoughts on certain topics because you, Raj, he can articulate, he can give people the information that they need. You know, a lot of times you see people on the news, they BS people. That's true. Raj is honest and truthful, and when he tells you something, they kind of feel like it's hard to disagree with this guy. Oh, well, I try. So some of you people, you might disagree, but I'm predicting a lot of you people are going to agree. But before we begin the segment, we'd like to give a shout out to our unofficial sponsors and also promote some uh, people. It's a cassette. <laughs> Mournful Cries. Debut Demo. I remember this. But Lust. Evil Confessor. They actually remastered this. Yeah. It's a nice, cleaner version, you could say. Uh, the production's a little better, but still, this is still a good release. I say the production's a little better, but it's a cassette. But it's on Bandcamp, so you can get the digital version, or you can get yourself one of these nice cassettes. Just message Mournful Cries, I'm sure they'll hook you up. Uh, yeah, you know, give a little promotion to Mournful Cries in the Budlust Evil Confessor demo. There you go, and also, right now, in any record store near you, if they still have record stores. This is <laughs> Night Demons Live Darkness. It's a double disc. Interesting. Two discs of live audio concert material from Night Demon. It's a great release. I saw them perform live. They're just kicking you know what all over the freaking place. Uh, 
awesome right here. You know, not many bands make live albums anymore, too. That's true. So, shout out to Night Demon Live Darkness. So, let's begin the segment. Thoughts from the Masters Sing. She thoughts on something before we begin the oh, segment. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we you go. You mentioned uh, Bandcamp, right? I believe Bandcamp allows you to buy music online, and it's DRM-free. So, you own it. When you buy it, it's yours. You can put it on your <clears> phone. <throat> you can put it on a hard drive. You can do whatever with it. You're not limited to just listening to it on an iPhone or a Google Pixel or whatever. You can take your music wherever you want. You want to burn it to a CD, listen to it in your car, you can. That is great. See? That stuff that if you were watching this podcast or this YouTube channel, you want to learn that stuff, people. So there you go. Some brilliant wisdom. And it's great to know that because for a lot of people, they may not be aware. Mm -hmm. And also bands, I'm sure, are also going to take advantage of that and tell people, hey, buy our music. Yeah, buy it on Bandcamp. Wow, we just gave Bandcamp a shout out. Look at that. Anyway, here we go, people. Thoughts from the master here. So we're going to start out with bands and artists, Raj. All right. To begin, ACDC. Love them. One of my favorite bands of all time. Bought all of their uh, albums for $8.99 a pop at Rasputin's over the course of the last uh, few years. Love that band. All right. So there you go. One of the best bands. However, I will say live, especially now, well, when Brian Johnson was still with them, it does leave a bit to be desired. You they have that. the energy, but Brian Johnson's voice, you know, just the way he sings just doesn't keep up with time, I think. There you go. I think that's a fair assessment. Anthrax. Love them as well. One of my favorite songs of all time, definitely my top five, is Break the Noise by Public Enemy and Anthrax. Actually, I was going to tie into the next one, Public Enemy. One of the greatest bands of all time yet again. Rock groups in this case, of course. See? Changing it up there. Mm -hmm. And you also seem to be a fan. And as you said, that mix of rap and metal was perfect. And a lot of people you know, go to Run DMC and the yeah. Aerosmith, but you have always said Public Bring Enemy and Anthrax is, far better, I think. is a lot higher when it comes to the quality there. All right. Dio. He's got, he's got it right there in front of him. Or say it. Uh, the best metal albums of all time. And the one thing, but you know, the thing about Dio that has always struck me more so than any other band or artist is his live stuff is probably some of the best you'll ever hear. The guy's voice is phenomenal. You know, most a lot of bands, most bands, I say, there's a stark difference between when you listen to them live or you know their uh, studio, studio albums. Dio, the difference is far less pronounced. His live stuff is phenomenal. There you go. I agree. Again, some great, great points there. <clears throat> Metallica. I've, you know, some respect, but I just never got into them as much as I did other bands. At least other uh, metal bands. Uh, I mean, you know, Black Album I like, and, but that's really about it, to be honest. When it comes to Metallica, there's just not a lot. What about the personalities? Because Lars, keep your comments and calm down. Don't get too upset. What about, you know, they always get this, they have egos. They're Metallica, they're on this pedestal as this great rock metal band. But at times you really look at it. I mean, you have to give them respect. Do you feel for it's a little bit metal inflated? To... to some extent, I think you do have to give them the proper amount of respect, especially for bringing metal to the masses more so than any other band. I think even more than Black Sabbath, you would say. Mm -hmm. Yes, Black Sabbath defined heavy. I mean, I'm not going to go that far. There are a lot of bands out there that definitely had a hand in defining heavy metal, but. Even more so than Black Sabbath, I think it's Metallica that really brought metal to the forefront of, you know, the current zeitgeist. Very With that, I mean, yeah. is there really any other band that achieved that level of popularity? Metal band? 
<clears throat> rock bands, yes, a lot of them especially. I, I think Metal that is one thing you would uh, have to say. Yeah. So ego aside, ego what aside, their accomplishments mm -hmm. speak for themselves. Have done, yes. Yeah. Oh wow, that's again, that's a very fair and diplomatic it's just assessment. Just I personally don't really like enjoy them. I mean, you know, amongst the big four, I'd say Anthrax is probably my favorite. Very fair and diplomatic, Raj. Very. ICP, the Insane Clown Posse. Well, you know, I uh, have to give them the proper respect for instilling in people a sense of curiosity as to how magnets might work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a pretty funny song. Did, yeah. you, did you realize jugglers, when they hold magnets, they actually they try to listen because they think ICP is talking to them. Most of the time they're just high, but... I can believe it. Man. I can believe it. <laughs> but I ICP... That's how long this worked. ICP has inspired people to challenge science. Indeed. So I guess is that... <laughs> or leave it. Challenge science or perhaps instantiate a love for science. A love for curiosity. There you, there you go. You're going you're gonna to be fair. Uh, you're not going to go after their fans for throwing balls at Ric Flair. <laughs> what, do, what do you think of that comment on that <laughs> I commented on the band not the fans okay there you go good philosophy to have comment on the band sometimes not the fans yes. wow okay I'm sure a lot of people will have uh, some responses to that how about Murray Head one night in Bangkok <laughs> yeah. makes the hard man humble <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny song, though. It's a funny song. It is. It is. We're actually going to create a version that's going to be called One Night at the Alfred Center. Yes, we are. And we'll probably get thrown um, out if we try to shoot the music video because they'll consider it. It's somewhat offensive. No, it's, a, it's offensive. Yeah. I was just going to wear the white suit and start, you know, doing the, the yeah. rap, but forget it. They, they want to get the joke. Okay, we're going to move on to movies. Wall Street. Love it. One of my favorite movies of all time. And Gordon Gecko, one of the best villains of all time. Is it the atmosphere, you think, that was so well captured by Oliver Stone? Definitely the atmosphere. I mean, you know, obviously I didn't grow up in the 80s, so I, don't, I can't really speak to the veracity of it. But in as much as I can tell from the books I've read or the movies I've seen, Wall Street is fairly emblematic of the excess of the 80s. Okay. Here's another, here's another movie about a decade, you could say, maybe, because mm -hmm. it came out at a time and it was a big movie for its time. Independence Day. You know, it seems to have fallen out of favor for some people, but I really enjoy it. I mean, it is one of the, there's really no other movie I can think of that, you know, besides maybe like Jaws or nowadays, you know, superhero movies like Avengers that really encapsulates what a blockbuster should feel like. That's true, and that's when it set the pace. And in the it's, a it's a surprisingly good movie. It's not bad. I haven't seen the second one, but and I, as you know, from what I understand, it's not as good as the first one. But it's, the first one is really good. There's very few films where the second one is better than the first. Godfather Two Godfather. might be the only challenge because I don't think you could say some Two Towers. Of, that's true. I think Two Towers is definitely better than you, all two other rings. You probably do have that one there. So just those two, I think, actually. You're right. That's true. Well, let's keep going with blockbusters. Because Raj loves his blockbuster giant action maybe, explosion maybe. films. And he's very good when it comes to analyzing the Avengers. Avengers. One of my favorite, probably my favorite movie of 2012. I mean, I enjoy I mean, I remember that day very vividly. I think it was... May 4th? No, I think it was May 11th, actually. And I went to, I think it's the AMC Empire 25 in New York City, watched Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Hulk, Thor, Captain America, and Avengers. Marathon, six, seven movies in a row. That was fun. He told me, he actually said I was at the Avengers Marathon, and I thought he was at a yeah. marathon yeah, where like people were marathon. running around dressed up like the Avengers. I said, 
really, Raj, you want to go and watch a bunch of people dressed up as superheroes running around New York City? He goes, no, no, I watched the movies. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't have taken that too literally. That was the fun of it. 12 hours. <laughs> Yeah, I thought they were running around for 12 hours, those people. I was like, gosh, I mean, they have water in every corner. But anyway, last movie. The Green Hornet. I enjoyed it. You know, some people might uh, ask to watch it with me, you know. If, uh, perhaps they should have looked the reviews up online before ragging on me about it for when did that movie come out was it 2009 2010 it's been 2010 it's been almost a decade and i still have to hear about it every month but it was a good movie i stand by it i will say that i'm not a, returning anybody's money well there was well there was one person one person's money, yes. who claimed that the film was horrible yet i sat next to him and he was cracking up the whole yes. time so if you ever watch this i sat on the other we, side of him yeah we know yeah, what happened we know the truth he loved that movie he loved that film and his favorite restaurant's Fuddruckers. It's a good restaurant. <laughs> okay. Good. We're going to get into wrestling now, because Rob right. and I do like wrestling entertainment. Yes, we do. Why not start off with the best, The Undertaker? Favorite wrestler of all time. There's really no question about it. Dude's been with the company for almost 30 years now. We're going to be, I think he joined up in, what was it, 91 or 92? When you debuted, so right? Wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, you're there at Survivor Series, I think. It was definitely Survivor Series. I just remember what year it was. I'm pretty sure it was 91 or 92, though. People didn't really give him a shot when he, before that in WCW. No. He was struggling. I mean, but, you know, proved his loyalty to the company. I think he's still one of the most respected superstars in the company. And it's a shame that they ended his streak in such an unceremonious manner. Which brings me to my next per next person, Brock Lesnar. Don't like him at all. Worst person to end the streak. Now, he, from what you told me around a few weeks ago, he's going back to the UFC. He keeps switching, isn't it? Yeah. That's what I've read. He's just uh... stick with one. <sighs> what do you think about with Brock Lesnar? The fact that they've invested so much, but in the end, has he really given them? I don't think so. I'm not sure he's as much of a draw as any other superstar there. I don't think he's as much of a draw as, say, The Undertaker, for one. If they hadn't had Lesnar in the streak, you think, and had Taker keep the streak, someone else would have been more deserving. Because this is the whole thing, well, Lesnar didn't do it, somebody would have made it. Someone would have maybe, but I feel as though they probably should have just left the streak alone. There's really no need to end it. They had, you know, the, at WrestleMania, they've had Reigns beat him, they've had Lesnar beat him. None of those guys really needed to get over The Undertaker. Well, now, why would Reigns beat him? Because it has yeah. nothing. Lesnar already beat him. Right. Unless, well, Reigns beats Lesnar, and we all know again, that people hated that one, Vince. Didn't right. you hear the boos? Well, that's well, right. They, they turned right, the boos down. Turned the mics down. So, you know that nobody wanted it. Nope. Oh, they did. Well, here's a person we, we had maybe thrown around as an idea to end the streak, and here's a guy that you've watched for a long time, and I've watched for a long time as fans of the WWE, Shawn Michaels. If Shawn had possibly, because Shawn put on a great match with Undertaker. He did. Those, I mean, their match at WrestleMania 25 is probably my favorite WWE match of all time. Favorite or second favorite? You know, his uh, match at 98 against uh, Mankind, Hell in a Cell. That's one of the best matches of all time. But I don't think so. I don't think Shawn Michaels should end the streak because there was nothing else for Shawn Michaels to do. That is true. And I'm pretty sure he was <clears> close. <throat> I mean, we all know he was close to the end of his career at that point. But he's coming back now. But he, yeah. That's, <laughs> these guys, these guys like can't movies. give it up. The sequels, they just keep coming. They just can't give it up. <laughs> all right. Teddy Long, one of my f the best general manager WWE has ever had. His reign on SmackDown has to be one of my favorites, just because we could always count on him every month to end the sentence with "The Undertaker." <laughs> we knew 
<laughs> he gave the people in tag team matches. I tag team matches. <laughs> but yeah, that those three four years, she seemed like a straight. You know, Undertaker was in his. I'm not gonna say in his prime. Definitely his late prime, but still more prime than now. But we got him consistently. And Teddy Long is definitely the most entertaining general manager I've ever seen WWE have. Oh, you could just do a video where you talk about that SmackDown period where mm -hmm. Teddy Long was the GM. That was probably yeah. the best period of SmackDown. Looking back on it, was the only period I watched SmackDown. That was that was it. That I remember was the when uh, they started bringing in uh, Vicky Guerrero? Oh, believe. that's that. Yeah, that's it what was I the whole thing out. with Edge when she was also <clears> Vicky and Edge, and then uh, yeah. then they also had Dolph Ziggler was involved. And Chuck they Guerrero was, as well. Chuck, oh yeah. God, they had the whole. It was bad. Yeah, that was that was embarrassing. I'm not even gonna get Vicky's not even on the list. I didn't add her. I didn't want to add her. She doesn't deserve to be on the list. I'm just I'm like Jericho. <laughs> There's the a list. list. This list is just as, is more over than Roman Reigns. Yeah. Roman Reigns actually is on the list because I want to hear what you have, your thoughts really on Roman Reigns. Maybe Vince will actually take note finally when he listens to you explain it to people. I think my thoughts can be encapsulated by the fact that WWE has to turn the mics down on the fans so the people watching don't hear them boo Reigns. That tells you everything you need to know about the guy. The people don't like him. I don't know why you want to push him. I don't know if it's nepotism, favoritism, maybe it's blackmail on somebody. I don't know. But <laughs> it's probably a good idea to drop him as quickly as possible. Sort of not unceremoniously, but as quickly as possible go on somebody else. Well, let's wrap it up with a... It's one, of, one of your favorite people, Raj. Okay. Alberto Del Rio. <laughs> you joke, he is one of my favorite people. Anybody that gets fired for uh, slapping somebody, running over Santa Claus. <laughs> he was entertaining. And then he gets he invited there. back. And then he gets invited back. Then he gets fired again. Did he slap somebody again? I, I, or was it drugs? I, I forgot down. what happened the second time. I, don't know. I just, after getting invited back after slapping somebody, it's, it's pretty impressive. How it many is. people can say that they slapped somebody at work, were fired, and then their boss yeah. said, oh, you know what, I want you back after you slap somebody. Yeah, because see, running over Santa Claus, that's fine, but slapping somebody, that's when you cross the line. If you, Master Singh, if you ran WWE and Alberto Del Rio slapped somebody, what would you have done? Honestly, I'd probably have fired him. That's messed up. <laughs> you don't slap your coworkers unless it's part of the shtick. Okay. Even if the person did something to provoke you, you still need to... Even if they did something... Take the higher road, right? It's just ironic and funny when you consider the fact that 20 years ago, there was this... Uh, what was it? It was a storyline between, I think it was uh, Big Boss Man and Big Show. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where they pulled Big Show's father's coffin. <laughs> Big boss man tows it away. <laughs> he rebuts it off. Yeah. And Big Show jumps on top of it. I'm sorry. It's just... You compare what happens off screen and it's much more tame yeah. than what happens on screen. But of course, the difference is one is every, every party agrees to it. Nobody agrees to being slapped off stage though. So yeah, he should have been fired. It's a good thing he was fired. <laughs> There we go. Well, hopefully uh, we never see Alberto Del Rio. Well, then again, if he oh, slaps no. us, we can press charges. So <laughs> we're <laughs> kind of safe there. <laughs> but anyway, people, we hope you enjoyed this segment of Ceremony Rocks. Mm -hmm. And this was the thoughts from the Master Singh. If you would like Master Singh to talk about a topic or something, leave a comment. We might add in the next video. So there you go. Ceremony Rocks. Ceremony Rocks. Signing out. Have a good night.